magnitude will be simply d times f times vector n. So even though you're using a totally different vector, your magnitude for the moment is identical as before, which is m o, and then you have the exact same unit vector n. So <coughs> I mean, what I'm trying to say is that when you find the moment of a given vector by point O, then all you really need is the force vector by itself and then a vector going from the point by which you want to find the moment and a point which is known on the force. So you're going to create a position vector from those two points and then you're going to do a cross product. And <coughs> I could write this here as a determinant. It could be I, J, and K, <coughs> your first set of vectors. Then you're going to have components Rx, Ry, Rz. Then you're going to have components Fx, Fy, and Fc. Or <coughs> your moment vector m o is simply going to be i times um, r y this times this which is f c minus r z f y plus j and again I'm going to switch so go from here to here you get r z f x minus r x f c then the third component will be k and that's rx fy minus ry fx. So that's the actual vector provided you're given the components for the position vector as well as the force vector. Now since the moment is a vector we could do exact same things we did for the force. That means we could find a resultant moment vector. So you have let's say x, y, z, and you happen to have a force here, let's say f1, you happen to have a force here. F2, and then you happen to have a force here, let's say F3. I could choose this point, and then I could write a resultant moment vector. You could take a position vector here as R1, you could take a position vector here as R3, you could take a position vector here as R2. Then the resultant moment by point O. <coughs> That's going to be <coughs> the moment of the first force about point O plus the moment of the second force about point O plus the moment of the third force about point O. And this by the definition is going to be R1 cross F1. This by the definition is going to be R2 cross F2 and this by the definition is going to be R3 cross F3. So <coughs> the way we found the resultant for the force, exact same thing that I work here, we can add the moment vectors about a known point. And we need to go through two more theorems. One is called as the Verignan theorem. And it simply says that the <coughs> moment of a force per known point is the same as the sum of the moments of the same or the components of the force. So, for example, if we had a force F and let's say you had a point O, then 
the moment of that is known, we already know that, that M O has R cross M. We just define that moment. Now, if this force happened to have two components, if there is a component here, F1, and there's another component here as F2. Or the force F is the sum of the component F1 and F2. If I put this back here, I could say that MO is R cross F1 plus R cross F2. <coughs> now, this one here could be brought here as F2. So, what you have here now, this one is the moment of the first component about the same point. This one here is the moment of the second component about the same point. So what we're saying is that <coughs> we could do this, that means we could find the moment of a force by a known point, or we could do this. We find this force, we find this as second, we add the two, and we will get the exact same moment. So in some problems, it might be convenient to <coughs> work with this set of equations than this one. And, and we'll see when we, work, we solve some problems. There's one more theorem, and that has to do with the principle of transmissibility. I mean, we went through this before, and all it says is that if you have an object and if you have a force acting on this, then if you maintain its magnitude and the direction, then two objects will be identical. I mean, I could move this force from here, let's say from point A to point B. The sta statically, the two objects will be identical if this is a rigid body so <coughs> you have the city you have magnitude you have direction and you have point of application so <coughs> for a given force you have these three things as long as you maintain these two I mean, the magnitude and direction, then this thing could be moved. I mean, you could actually move your force anywhere along this line, and it will not change the static equilibrium for that object. Okay, we're going to stop here.